Welcome back to Morning Express. It's time for the newsroom and I'll go straight to introducing the panel that we have this morning. And to my extreme left, we have Patrick Kadara, who is a communications consultant. Good to have you and uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for, for, for having me. Uh, Karibu. Next, we have Victor Buire, who is the Deputy CEO for Media Council of Kenya. Good to have you too. Pleasure. Karibu Good morning. Sana. Last but not least, we have David Ohito, who is a digital editor with a standard amongst many other hats that he wears. <laughs> and uh, good to have you too. Nice to be back. Now, I know last week I tried to call you and you're not around because you had attended a conference in Colombia. Maybe you can just update us on what was going on. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, basically, we were having the annual uh, World News Media Congress, uh, uh, which brings in the World Association of Newspapers, uh, World Association of Advertisers, and the World Editors Forum in one place to discuss the media industry, uh, the technological challenges and also the professional challenges that come uh, with the industry that is rapidly changing. Mm -hmm. A very, very intensive uh, four-day session in which people look at the media industry. Okay. Sure. And uh, looking at, I'm sure we had um, media industry, uh, well, media players from all, all over, over the, the world. world. Sure. Looking at where we are in terms of uh, Kenya, how, how do we rank? Kenya doing pretty well. There were just a few concerns about uh, fresh laws that are being enacted to try and uh, take away uh, freedom, freedom of the media mm -hmm. and independence of the media. Uh, those were the only concerns raised about Kenya. Uh, the threshold of our um, professionalism uh, facing technological challenges just like the rest of the world. And uh, I, I think um, while Kenya was ranked very good, they also gave it a plus for mi migration to the digital platforms, which is considered a, a best practice mm -hmm. in, in the industry today. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bigger picture was how do newsroom tailor themselves in the wake of technological revolution so that they remain re relevant and that the pursuit of truth remains, that the professionalism that we sought as a profession to, you know, embed remains in place and um, people are dealing with those challenges. Okay, Victor, um, now that you are a, the Deputy CEO for Media Council of Kenya, are you concerned that even the world is concerned about media freedom in Kenya? Interestingly, I was also, I was also in, in Bonn, Global Media Forum, mm -hmm. where, where again, uh, interestingly, the same things we are grappling with in Kenya. Is, I think is, that uh, we should go for some the, media forum as well. The global concerns. I, I mean, uh, we are there with the, with the Munene, KTN, MD, yes. from Japan, mm -hmm. and, and the rest. And, and we are over 2,000 delegates. The same, same topics that, 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 that the editors and other people are raising in terms of challenges with the media seem to be global. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are dealing with the issues of journalism and professionalism. People are asking globally, have we lost it? Have we lost journalism values? Do we need to re reconsider journalism as a profession in the wake of other emerging issues? The, the issues of uh, social media, the issues of terrorism, the mm -hmm. issues of laws. So, so, so it would seem the trend globally and the challenges media is facing seem to be a global. Mm -hmm. Much as there was no much on, on laws in terms of how they are affecting mm -hmm. freedom, but there are practical sessions on, on what some of the, the challenges, the propaganda uh, online is media, traditional media struggling uh, to feed online media at their convergence uh, points. What do, we do, what, what do we learn? How do you deal with the issues of migration? Is media dealing with the issues of migration well? We are closing the Redub camp tomorrow. How is media dealing with such issues? Mm -hmm. uh, the issues of election. Uh, elections are global. In fact, there was a, 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 huge, a, whole, a whole session on how media is covering the presidential elections in, uh, I mean, campaigns in, in America. And mm -hmm. the same, same challenges we are asking ourselves here. Embedded journalists. Are journalists embedded with political parties? Are they activists? Are they journalists? I mean, mm -hmm. these challenges are global. They're global. And okay. every, uh, uh, are the elections personality-oriented or issue-oriented, mm -hmm. which uh, gradually are the same, same things we are asking ourselves. Mm -hmm. Hard questions here. Uh, is our media dealing? You know, where have we lost it? Where do we go and reconsider and relook? Is, is the training the problem? Is the profession the problem? The issues of, 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 of influence, of owners, of, of, of advertisers in terms of PR-generated journalism. Those are the, the, the global the issues. The global issues. Gadara, your comments in regards to that, because I know you're normally very hard on, uh, especially <laughs> our local uh, media in yeah. terms of how they do cover it. But it seems it's not a unique problem to Kenya. Well, I mean, it's never been unique to Kenya. I mean, uh, media has challenges uh, across the world. 
But that said, that doesn't excuse uh, us from actually trying to do uh, a better job or um, uh, allow us to gloss over the, the very real uh, uh, challenges and, 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 and issues that our media faces in actually covering the, the news. Um, I mean, we've had lots of reports that um, are point to um, uh, a deterioration of the media space in Kenya. You know, um, uh, most independent um, uh, uh, observers will, uh, would agree that we we're we going through a phase where um, um, media freedoms are under threat. You know, and it's not just from legislation, although that's a big part of it. Um, uh, we are seeing uh, uh, extrajudicial action, so whether it's um, uh, people being arrested as a form of harassment, you know, um, uh, being beaten up by uh, uh, by police, um, and also um, pressures uh, that emanate from uh, the power of uh, both government and corporations uh, in advertising. So the threat of losing adverts becomes uh, one that then uh, impedes or curtails the media's ability to cover stories. I think also, I mean, there's a, a mention of, uh, 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 of terrorism here. And I think our coverage of, of that has been particularly uh, uh, lacking. Uh, mm -hmm. the, um, last week, we had the uh, five-month anniversary of El Adi. Right. And, uh, no media, as far as I know, uh, mentioned it. You know, I spoke thought you about it. In well, I did in my cartoon, <laughs> but in a sense, no. But, but, but the fact is, for the vast majority of our press, no one mentioned it. You know, and just a few weeks before, uh, in fact, I think it was a week or so before, you had CNN come out with this story that said uh, basically that they had ferreted out a number of the people who were dead at Elade. Again, widely ignored by our local media. In fact, my question was, why is CNN doing it? Why is it eight hour media that's that doing this? You know? So it seems to me that um, uh, when it comes to issues where it involves, and, and it's not just a ladder, think about Westgate and how that has been forgotten. You know, um, the role of the KDF, whether there has been any accountability for it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, nobody Victor, speaks you, about it. Do, you know. we, I, I'm not so sure that, that we are forgotten. Mm. But so, how many other terrorist attacks have happened in the country? And if our media is just going to concentrate on the very many terrorist attacks, are we going to cover other things? But sometimes it's good to have the history of it and kind of close one case so that we can also reflect on the other. Right now we have uh, police officers uh, mm -hmm. that were bl uh, blown up in in, in, in a certain exercise and if we do not know what happened mm -hmm. in Westgate we do not know uh, exactly what happened in uh, Garissa then how do we deal with the terrorism yeah, I mean, it's Westgate it's Peketoni it's Mandera in all these and places and we can count them where is, now, where, is the, where is the accountability the newspaper has 46 pages for example mm -hmm. if we are going to spare all uh, space for terror and they're happening every day the, 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 those that have been contained there, those are happening is our media able to uh, for example, just focus on terrorism per se. Mm -hmm. You know, we must also look at the space, editorial space versus advertising space, the 60-40 percent discussion we must. There are too many other things that are happening, but we are not saying that media, there's a level media would follow a story to a level where other, uh, other sectors take up but we can't say media will become the police to arrest, to prosecute. Oh, to again, do. nobody has <laughs> suggested. But they also are the developing stories. The stories. Yeah. <laughs> we can't manage. I mean, unlike business pages, sports pages that have space, mm. there's no space for terrorism in, in our newspaper. No, why no. not? So, uh, Ohito, do you feel that uh, why that is being unreasonable I mean, to expect us to always, like now, uh, but, but he makes a valid point given that we had the five months of El Ade, and uh, it becomes an opportunity just to bring up the story and ask the questions, the necessary questions. Uh, I agree with uh, Gadara. Uh, sometimes I think we tend to forget, and in Kenya, we particularly stand accused of, you know, running, glossing over matters. If it is hate speech, we'll do it for one week, then forget yeah, about forget it about <laughs> until the next loose uh, hate monger comes back. So <laughs> we, we've been accused of uh, failing to do what we used to call follow up in the traditional media houses but the way audiences consume info has also changed so uh, to expect that we will go and pitch the traditional platform and more way of narrating stories is also changing um my problem is that we've had attacks as late as uh, the last 48 hours or so 
and no single media house is capable of going to that marginalized part of the country that Mandera is to get the shots, to get the real story of what really transpired. Mm -hmm. Who are the members of these five good officers who died for the country? They do not fall where heroes are. Instead, we are having headlines still focusing on hate mongers. At a time, we have lost five very important security officers in an attack. You know, we've got to remember that these aren't just isolated incidents. Um, in, on June 4th, we had another attack, you know, um, that again wasn't widely covered as far as I know. Um, we had an ambulance, you know, attacked uh, yesterday. IED. You know, these things are continuing. And for as long as we don't go back and ask, why do they happen? You know, when we have a report of uh, over 100 Shabab guys coming across the border, which was reported about three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and then we forget about it. You know, government turns up, they make some noise, oh, we're going to catch them, and then we forget. And then attacks start happening. Nobody goes back and asks, those guys who crossed the border, did we ever catch them? Mm. You know, and this is the problem. Um, you speak of space in the paper. Well, actually, as uh, Hito mentions, things have changed. You've got unlimited space online within which you can work and put in st uh, uh, stuff. There is no limitation of space there. You know. And actually, if our media was, took it seriously, took its job seriously to actually inform and not so much become captured by the political shenanigans, which is what we seem to really delight in reporting, you know, if we actually went to the meat of the issues, what actually matters? You know, for most guys, security is a big deal. The fact that what happened at Westgate, we don't know till okay. today. To this my question is this. If we don't learn lessons, you know, if our, our own security guys aren't able to learn lessons, if they buy APCs, and then we, see, we hear of them going on patrol, not in those APCs, or, or in escorts, in land cruisers. Nobody asks, where are these APCs? Uh, mm. you know, that sets used. us up, I, I, all up. I, I, we all lose I as could a society. Share, I could share something. Then. One, uh, Gadara wa, uh, does work for a, a national media house. Correct. And, and through his cartoon, which I follow, and like, through his articles, has written consistently on some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's part of the Kenya media. Sure. So by his column, his cartoon, c consistently. It is already there. Thing, mm -hmm. It's already there. So mm -hmm. I mean, it might not be adequate, but it's already there. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, terrorism and media are new things. In the sense that uh, you and me are not specialists in terrorism reporters. We don't, we have such. And, and, and noticing that such experience, I don't want to do PR, but noticing that there was a gap and lessons we learned from Peketoni, from Garissa, from, from Westgate. Uh, media comes with others, actually. We are doing a project on media, uh, responsible media reporting, terrorism, radicalization, and countering violent extremism. Mm -hmm. and, and part of the, the discussion, we already started in Mombasa and Malin, we did last week and the other week before I, I traveled, and we are going, we are now calling editors uh, next, in a two weeks' time with National Security and National Counterterrorism Department is to work and see, these are new challenges. How do people, uh, media and security agencies work in, 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 a, in a sense that we respect freedom of expression, access to information, vis-a-vis -vis national security and related. Mm -hmm. And part of that, in fact, we are developing a handbook for journalists on reporting terrorism and, and, and related. So, because these are lessons, these were new things that, and, and, and if you look at the, the draft national counterterrorism strategy and uh, the draft national uh, counter, well, which are yet to get a cabinet approval, mm -hmm. there's a huge section on, on security and media and how they think we media and security should work around issues of terrorism and how do we report. Okay. Because these are grey areas and, and, and if you look but, at Mpeketoni, mm. each of us failed mm. in their own ways. Mm. If you look at Garissa, the, much as is said that the, the media reported well, but you would see if you talk to Onsarigo, to Mohammed, to Oko, they will tell you how military yeah, harassed yeah, them. Yeah. So it was not the best example again. So how do we uh, balance, uh, balance some balance. of these things? So, All right, Gadara, you seem to disagree with uh, uh, Victor. <laughs> well, a few things are working. I, I've got to say this. I, I think the, for me, um, the, the less that we approach this also, I mean, uh, uh, matters quite a bit. You know. um, I think the, the media has not been restrained uh, 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 in a sense. I mean, and, and I understand that there are challenges, you know, as you, as you speak. I mean, government, I want to give information, for example. You know, a lot is a good example where they simply will keep mum and, and refuse to say anything. But that doesn't mean that the media itself has to run with the government narrative. There's nothing that compels it to do this, yet it consistently does. 
you know, throughout the, 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 the period, you know, and there is no sort of probing consti consistently. I wish you and this is my areas. Thing, you know, and this is my problem, you know, so that we sort of abdicate our responsibility to inform so that the citizen can hold his government to account. He needs information. Okay. You know, and we keep abdicating that. And it's not, I think, true to, 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 to suggest that it, because it's a gray area and we don't really know how to report it. We know how to tell stories. How do you the access stories that, that, Let me finish. The stories that matter to us, we tell. Three days. You know, but the thing is, a lot of times, these other ones that might make government uncomfortable, we sort of tread around them. And this is what I'm, I, I have an issue with. You know. And I think we need to get away from this lens of saying, okay, let's sit and see how we work with government to tell but stories, but let, let, and more from... to how we actually inform the citizen mm -hmm. so that he can hold his government to account. That's Let me hear from Ohito. Uh, Ohito, you're on the desk. And is it an issue of capacity? Is it an issue of possibly there is another developing story? Because at the end of the day, uh, what Gadara is speaking issue is, is literally follow-up and probing and asking the right questions. But uh, Buddha brings also an important point here in regards to terrorism being something new and the fact that it morphs. It, it is forever changing. Do we have the capacity to keep up we have the capacity, but the question, the big question is that the editor today is not judged by how many follow-ups he does. But we are doing a commercial product. We are not a free-to-air channel like KTN, uh, but even free-to-air channels like KTN News they need have revenue. Read revenue to keep on servicing those uh, content production and gathering. The newspaper, for example, has to sell. So, and Mandera, where this latest incident of terror happened, is about three days on the road on a uh, SUV which is new. Uh, it's also dangerous because the, the routes are laced with IEDs, as you saw. And three by air is about one way tickets, about 18,000 shillings, and you go to pay an hotel down there. How many media houses have such resources to commit chasing that story? That is one. But two, we should be asking the hard questions. And I agree with uh, Gadar on this that what has happened? Uh, we know very many attempts have been neutralized by the good uh, general who took over the intelligence system. But when you start seeing consistent attacks after previous warning by both uh, international partners and even our own inspector general of police and we still cannot foil these attempts then it means there's something which has already started going wrong uh, what is the state of our soldiers who are across the border since the El Adi attack? What is their state of psyche? Are they still motivated to fight until the last minute for the country? What happened to the 900 kilometer <laughs> uh, wall? <laughs> which I understand the construction is underway. No media house has even told us is it at 100 meters now or is it at one kilometer? So the question here is, being is, is it a failure on our part to follow up or is it that we don't have the capacity? Because you've just mentioned uh, for instance, the air ticket just to go to uh, some of these uh, yeah. high-risk areas, uh, the fact that it's risky, literally it's alluding to the fact that the capacity may not be there from the and media house. capacity may be there. 18,000 shillings for an air ticket for standard group or nation media or citizen is it's really nothing. Uh, the question is, how safe are uh, our journalists have... when they go there? Mm -hmm. If security officers themselves can be attacked by RPGs and IEDs, and we lose life. Um, Is it worth risking the life of journalists? No, if I may throw in something. Yes. Yeah. I mean, um, if you've been to Mogadishu, um, you will find quite lots of journalists working in Mogadishu, you know, and telling the stories of Mogadishu. And uh, that's a model that our media could take. You have local journalists, even in places like Wajir, Bandera, ATC, who can tell these stories, but whose freedom of movement is actually much greater you know, whose sources are you know, a much more, uh, I mean, they, they, they've got a much wider network of sources because they live there, they the, the, work there, you know, the, and the, stuff. The so that might be something that the, the media the, might the, think the about. Challenge. Because I, I traveled to those areas last mm. week. Mpeketon is still under curfew. Yes, uh, if you travel from uh, Garissa, Mbalambala, uh, Hola, Hola, those areas have been sealed off mm. by either the KDF, and in fact, the, the, the camps are interlinking KDF. Kenya police. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the area is actually sealed off. 
and, and, and even the terrorist routes are changing because of that. It's even more difficult for the journalists to access some of those areas. Because uh, now, like you are saying, that's why we say our journalists cannot access some of those areas without security understanding that they are here for their watchdog run mm -hmm. Because otherwise they will be arrested for, mm -hmm. for moving in a, a cafe area. Issue of national security, and, and we understand the Swane principle, the Jobag principle, and what they talk about, and our national security laws. We, we, we changed and brought Article 34, 35, yes. But how many other sections did we, didn't we check to harmonize? So that under Official Secrets Act, National Security Act, KDF Act, there are so many acts that they would use to stop journalists from accessing those areas. Mm -hmm. You have asked a hundred questions about El mm -hmm. Have mm -hmm. we ever gotten an answer? You know, and, and they would always say, under the job back principles under the KDF Act, operational issues cannot be given, war casualties <laughs> cannot be given, and sometimes they just actually no. We, but we this must, is my point. We it's must allow we must allow <laughs> police. In fact, what we are saying, there's, there's already at a course at Kiganjo and the uh, rest on media relations and public speaking uh, for officers. Mm. There is the, 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 the former Kimayo directive that stopped officers on the ground from talking to uh, journalists. Right. How how do we deal? And we are, we are engaging the Ministry Interior to remove that directive that mm. so that more officers at the ground are given capacity to talk to media to share some and, and I, 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 again, there, there, there are two issues here uh, uh, victor that i i i mean I'm, I, I'm a bit uncomfortable with number one is, is is this idea of sort of what we are telling is the official truth so what these guys really require How do they no, because the these guys i mean the, the way the, our video works is to ferret out the story the officials don't want told this is what we should be doing but the editor has mentioned yeah. how much budget does standard have yeah. ktn have national um, for investigative journalism uh, these are desks that are dead you know, so <laughs> yeah so no those are the issues i think we then need to address you know and not to ignore the fact that they're there that do they exist that we are, we are actually failing in doing our work you know and then we ask why and we fix that you know so uh, my point is this media? my point is this um i i think we, we can't sit back and say you know that because we can't access this we'll just run with um uh, uh what but is the question the, is that for that example how, he gave how, the example how, how, he, he gave the example of um uh, them saying we can't give uh uh, uh, uh details on, on on our casualties etc which is something that they uh, uh, they say with one mouth and then when there are fewer casualties and it's two or three they're quite happy to come out and say yes we had two casualties yesterday no i asked that, uh, does anybody stand up and ask them you know you know you told us in the last day we can't tell you now you're saying here we can tell you which is which you know who actually sits down with the uh, kdf and asks, okay what are your rationale for saying you can't give you know a, a casualty count and then compare with other militaries across the world which are very happy so we not do only give you uh, the, the numbers we actually give okay. you names we help where these guys are from do we ETC? help in reviewing the uh, operational the, the standing <laughs> pro, uh, procedures for the police mm -hmm. that have put it in law if you read the four standing orders they say such information should not be given now I, 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 within those laws, if they are still existing in our laws, much as we have access to information freedom, but they also have, and for obvious reasons, I'm not supporting them, but we are saying where they can also quote a section of the law and say, uh, according to our operational procedures mm. or standing orders, mm. I mean, uh, for standing orders, we are not allowed to give information on casualty. I was reading that document even up, up including yesterday. I've even looked at international <laughs> documents like the Swane principles, uh -huh. the, the job back principles on national security and freedom of expression, and they also seem to give. Mm. Uh, that to to to, to, to <laughs> government that that under the following conditions government can give or may not give no, may not give <laughs> may not give all right david <laughs> ohito your comments on this regarding now the fact that sometimes we seem to not have access to that information no uh, my only problem yes access to information remains a big challenge globally not just in kenya mm. but my big problem is that we can mobilize dozens of police officers to now harass and chase innocent protesters <laughs> But we cannot send the same police officers with vigor and APCs that we, you know, give the media glare to really police our borders. And I think to that end, we must start having good action. Why use of, uh, police officers against innocent Kenyans when they can be used to fight terrorism? To fight yeah, terrorism. And I think for me, in, in the end, what really matters um, uh, is, 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 is accountability is us being able to hold the people who hold power to account. And I think um, we, you mentioned about the people being beaten on the streets uh, by police. You know, again, follow up. You know, we had this picture that was flashed around the world 
of a, of a guy beating up, I mean a policeman really beating up a protester. Who goes back and asks? Well, this is so many months later, so many weeks later. Well, has that guy actually been subjected to any disciplinary proceedings? You know, and this is my thing: is I find we are too quick to move on and to accept official rationalizations. You know, that's what I'm saying. El Ade is really an issue of accountability. You had over 141 people dead there. You know, who do we hold to account for that? Who do we say? If you look at how Uganda dealt when they had 19 people killed at Janale, you know, they had court martials, they fired people, you know, they arrested people. You know, because they care about, this issues. is my point, they <laughs> care about their soldiers. We cannot be saying we care about our soldiers or our police when we ignore when they die, when we keep quiet, when they die and we well, just Well, like Victor had mentioned, fine. Agadara, is yeah. ours is to raise the questions, mm -hmm. but we cannot execute, we cannot well, implement again, do. Our, As much as we care about <laughs> our soldiers, we cannot court-martial them as uh, the media. No, again, and, and the other thing is that, like, like the pro protester you are saying, and mm -hmm. media did its part showed uh, an officer beating up a police. Uh, right. Now, is the lawyers and the rest public interest litigation, people, uh, uh, the other people to pick up the, and so no, 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 no. them the media the follows I up it and can't asks it the questions. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I think you guys give yourself other people right, must also take up responsibility. No, that, no. that's true. And other that, that, that's true. Other people should be arrested. Uh, most of it can't but be the media. idea that let's just ignore it. You know, mm -hmm. If it has happened, we should be asking. You know, and that's my point. We go back and we ask, why what haven't these guys do been? Well in you know, and I do well in the column and cartoon. All right, I want us to move on to something else, gentlemen. <laughs> but it looks like dev evidently there's a lot that we need to do, especially in regards to security. Mm. And uh, given the fact that there seems to be incidences that are coming up, uh, you know, of, of, of insecurity, and that, of course, should be a matter of concern. And maybe we should follow up on some of those that have already happened. But let's come back to uh, the standard this morning. MP's confession at lunch date with Riley and uh, this of course is to do with hate speech and the fact that many of us know that the legislators had been uh, behind bars for three days then they were released and this seems to be a result of that yesterday they had lunch together which uh, of course was under the invite of the opposition leader Raila Odinga and uh, you remember there was the Boston Tea Party which was a revolution we don't know now if there's going to be an Ugali and Fish Party which will be revolutionary but let's first of all have some of the comments that they made yesterday after this then we look at how we have reported on hate speech and whether this is a new dawn for kenya as it were but these are some of the comments that the legislators had to uh, give after uh, they had their lunch yesterday za wafungwa wote wa, wa, wa the, um, wale watu walikuwa wameshikwa kuenda kupeleka amani mimi na mwenzangu kuria hapa na wale wengine polisi walitufungia katika seli moja wakifikiri tutapigana lakini tulitoka tukishikana mikono kama chanda na pete mimi mwenyewe kwa hii siasa nilipiga mudhama naomba msamaha kwa mudhama na mimi nitapelekea mbuzi kama mzee. Nitapelekea mbuzi kama mzee. Mimi nilipigana na wata. Nilipiga mimi. Nitapeleka mbuzi ya wazee. Ili hiyo mambo ifanye nini? Kuinje nyinyi mnapigana. Sasa sisi ndio mmepotea bwana. We believe very strongly that uh, any Kenyan individual is presumed to be innocent until there is due process that if you are arrested by the police you must be entitled to your other civil rights until you have been tried and convicted by a court of law all right so those are some of the comments they had to say yesterday after their lunch let me start with you Hito, in terms of uh, the real issues that you know, took them first of all behind mm. bars and the fact that now they're out. Are we again chasing and running after politicians and forgetting the main thing? I think uh, preaching hate is a very big crime which should 
be taken i mean the leaders must be held to account we cannot allow our country to sink further like we saw in 2007 2008 by reckless careless statements are coming from elected leaders and i think the prosecution should pursue this matter to its logical conclusion but two i look at the parallelogram if you like that guys who took three four days in a cell are having a meal with a man who spent eight and a half years in a cell <laughs> eight and a half years every single day you know in jail and they're complaining about uh four days stint. four days i mean uh, that that for me you know really makes this look like uh, a cosmetic approach to dealing with issues however i think if there's any positive that should be taken out of this meeting or luncheon it should be that we must unite all kenyans let's speak all i, I would be happy if the ugali was eaten in Gatunu south in kiambu and we go to nakuru and you know tell the people no we must stop this reckless uh, kind of talk we must stop this hate mongering uh, between these communities that kenya is enough big enough for all of us i think that for me would be a bigger healing process than uh, just this a, a, a one hour ugali eating session okay victor on uh, this uh, your comments on what is happening and possibly the fact that there are bigger issues that than just the, the legislators sitting to eat ugali and you don't know how long that is going to be that's, that's, the, that's the issue that are we are we are we reducing are we trivializing mm. the, the the war on the head speech as it were while uh, the process of, of dealing with hate speech uh, needs to be tightened up but we need to ask hard questions uh, and, and and if we are going to politicize the war on hate speech uh, because if if you look at uh, what was uh, what is happening is that yes people are doing their work but are there any other cases of hate speech that we have slept on mm. why are we picking i i, I remember Same. the shabal case in mombasa there are serious cases on Meru, Isiolo, border where there was serious hate speech. There are other places. What happened to uh, such uh, in Malindi? I remember there were serious issues. So yes, we need to move, but we must widen. We must look at other cases that happen that are more even serious because there's hate speech in our bedrooms, in the churches, in schools, uh, and, and the rest. And and, and the mere uh, the, the, the the mere appearance of this, my my, are we removing hate? Are we preventing it? Are we dealing with the structures? Mm -hmm. Because remember, there were the national accord issues that, that raised fundamental issues. If we are going to continue with skilled employment in public service, with corruption, impunity, are we going to deal? Because some of these things is, is frustration, is hatred. Is, why, why, would, why would I wake up one day and, and for example, hate Patrick, who is a brother? Mm -hmm. So th there are more fundamental issues to, to what is happening than just mere politicians appearing and uh, eating together. Because eating might be a public event but inside their hearts inside the other things they are doing mm. are we seeing the same we because seeing? yes they have appeared together but it's now for six days they have never sorted out the ibc whatever they were supposed to have sorted out it was <laughs> it was five days it was three days it was two hours it was it's not there so mm. th that already tells you that, that, that are we seeing that in parliament from our leaders in parliament the 300 and so uh, are we seeing that across the churches also yesterday okay. i was receiving some complaints from some church, churches who, who, you know and you see that we, are we seeing that online are we, the, the head online if you look it's at terrible. how people are, it's terrible mm. so are we going to sort out head speed by mere, mere eating mm. together so all right <laughs> Gavara, your comments on this and possibly the way forward because chances are we could end up now concentrating on just this meal and what the leaders have to tell us and forget that there's a reason as to why we were here in the first place well, uh, uh, I think this is an, a good example of how our, our media works to sanitize um, our, our the political space, you know, essentially to present it as this uh, place where people have the road to Damascus moments, you know, <laughs> that we really know. We know this is all for all the pictures, you know. Um, uh, part of the reason that this sort of things happen is in essence it's an uh, attempt to defeat uh, uh, justice or to make it seem as if you know you don't really need to go ahead with court cases because we have reconciled which has been uh, if, if you remember it's been a, 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 a continuing a motif you know that uh, if you go back all the way to 2007-2008 you know the uh, post-election violence the idea that reconciliation means that we do not need to hold people to account. 
you know. And this is my point. I think we are sanitizing them. We are, you know, um, uh, Moses Kuria, whose picture is up there, you know, has pending cases, you know. He's out on bail, you know, commits a similar offense, you know, or supposedly is charged with a similar offense, you know, and still gets to keep his bail. Where else does this happen, you know, in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Why isn't that what we are focusing on? Mm -hmm. you know, we are given a show, you know, let's have lunch, let's have things. And we all rush and we get nice pictures and stuff, but we forget the substance. The substance. You know, and the substance is we've got laws that we are not enforcing. You know, um, uh, the second thing is even those laws. I mean, it's a, a bit of a misnomer for us to speak of uh, a, a hate speech because it's very limited in in, in application in how it's worded. You know, it's only speech that might excite ethnic hatred. But we have hate speech every day in our papers against women, against homosexuals. You know, etc. There are many groups that are marginalized and are oppressed by okay. speech mm -hmm. that we don't look at. So I think we need to be going back and looking at these laws and asking, what is it, why is it that they are framed the way they are, what needs changing, and how, more importantly, how do we actually enforce them? Mm -hmm. And not get this into this situation where people can say we've got a political discussion going, mm -hmm. so therefore we can ignore the laws, you can the laws ignore the penalties, you know, mm -hmm. ETC, which is, I think, what a lot of this um, uh, lunches and stuff are meant to defeat. It's, okay. it's essentially or, or, or to, to be fair to uh, media uh, per se. Of course, this is something that they, they, they would have to cover because it is somewhat uh, not something we have seen before. Sure. So it, it is something to cover. But are we, like Gadara says, sanitizing and possibly run with this particular narrative that things are okay and forget that there are laws that may have been broken, forget that there are cases that are still pending, forget that there are some who may even be multiple offenders. It's not the first time that this has happened. And then uh, trivialize it to a point where now they're apparently because of the suffering of three days and using a bucket, now everything is okay. Kenya is healed and we can move on. No, but you know, healing process takes time. And we must really, if we can have politicians stopping the grandstanding that was throwing the country into a lot of tension, making the stocks plunge, making business, businesses make losses, you know, making traffic get paralyzed. And businesses and, um, and, you know, interrupted. Sure, and looted. Then for me, that's a positive thing. But the problem is how far are we applying this across the country? Only yesterday there were reports that there were those tension and fights between Nandi and Kisumu okay. counties. Mm -hmm. If leaders would apply the same, that today we'd have a luncheon along that border with leaders from both communities, for me it would be positive. But as long as we have the Kaparos speaking from press conferences in Nairobi and telling people that Kenya is going the wrong direction, that is the proverbial ostrich burying its head in the sun. Mm -hmm. We must tackle this issue. Head we on. saw the great nation of Rwanda go down because of hate speech and ethnic hatred. What role can media do in the next 12, 13 months before the election? Make sure that we do our role uh, objectively and um, fairly in a way that we do not inflame ethnic tensions. Mm -hmm. I am happy if Mudama cannot hurl those insults. I am a better Kenyan if uh, Korea cannot say those words he always says. But I wish you were that was the last we heard from them. Mm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And, and, and the challenge, like you're saying, David, mm. is that we are moving again to 2013, uh, where we are militarizing. Uh, 13, actually, what yes, happened? Yes, yes. Militarization of peace. Yeah. That we are now want to force everybody to, to, for, to, be, to be appearing, to be preaching peace mm. at the expense of some other rights and yeah. other, other issues. And, and already the, the narrative is already started. Yeah. And the media being part of the, the society mm -hmm. might not want, again, like what happened to that, to be seen not to be playing with the other sectors. Mm -hmm. Because everybody is now preaching peace. Everybody is saying we come together, we come together. Mm -hmm. And that's the fear. That's why now we have happened one story of people coming together, <laughs> you know, because we want to fit. And some of these decisions are journalists made, some of these decisions are made elsewhere. Mm -hmm. That's now, sometimes they were, when, when we are, when news has become a product for sale, and we are looking at headlines as what will sell, necessarily, and what's not, what's good 
uh, from a journalistic point of view mm. and, and that's now the concern and where we're having uh, and, a lot of trended don't forget about this yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we are having I, a discussion with, 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 the, with the editors yeah. in fact that at what level uh -huh. are we are we editors going to stand and say this is our position mm -hmm. and this is the new because these politicians this business have hospitals for example they are businessmen they own hospitals how many of them go to hospital and tell their doctors now this one dunga shindana malaria this one mm -hmm. why is uh, why are editors allowing so much yeah. interference in some of the decisions they are made to a level where where are they we need their voices mm -hmm. in some of these decisions much yes. as we know they are going also through difficult times mm -hmm. and but we need to see editors more pro, uh, prominent in mm -hmm. making some of the determination in what we think mm -hmm. Uh, are they setting the national agenda, for example, yeah. or are we picking and following? Uh, I mean, th th those are concerns uh, that uh, even us, where we, we see it, some of us who are practicing journalists, as I'm saying, we are asking ourselves hard questions. Mm -hmm. And like I was mentioning in the, some of those wild forums where we were, those are global questions. Have media, lo have journalists lost it? Have we given up? Mm -hmm. uh, the number of like journalists now quitting private media to form their own media-led. It's going global because there's frustration mm -hmm. that, that where are the values? Where are the professional calling for journalists? Where, where are these statements we used to have that journalists are never made? That journalists is not for the uh, faint-hearted. Where are they? Mm -hmm. We need to see our journalists, our editors more prominent in, in making decisions, in determining some of the content that goes online or, 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 or more prominent more than prominent what is happening than right, right. Right. Let, Let's define the role of media now, given this uh, mm -hmm. issue of hate speech and where we are as a country, especially given that we are heading to 2017 and like uh, David Ohito says it may not be the last time that we have heard from some of these legislators mm -hmm. literally with their verbal diarrhea mm -hmm. but the issue is we are forever chasing after them and having that as a story and as soon as something else comes we divert what's our role in this case to ensure that first of all somebody is held to account mm -hmm. and secondly we don't go down that slippery road well um, I, I think uh, Victor pointed out to a, 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 a very um, uh, important um, uh, 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 gap that mm -hmm. uh, or, or where the media is concerned. I think um, the fact that they've given up or abdicated the the, the, the role as setting uh, the, the agenda setting role, mm -hmm. you know, and left it to the politicians. So that's why we are constantly chasing after them. You know what? What's next? What are they gonna say next? It is instead of us setting the agenda, they will discuss. Mm -hmm. In in fact, in a very real sense, our media sort of gives up its power because it should be the politicians chasing the media, you know, wanting you there and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And the media essentially setting, saying these are the important issues we need to discuss. Um, I think he makes a good point when he speaks of the militarization of peace. You know, um, I think in 2013 we had this sort of tyranny of. Uh, um, Peace journalism, you know, where I essentially sweep everything under the carpet is just let's talk peace, 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 you know. And I think you're seeing that again, you know, as Victor said. I think when everybody now is sort of obsessed with hate speech and things, and then we start conflating issues, you know, or it's the demonstrations we don't want, it is, the, you know, looting of businesses, blah, blah, blah. And then it's made to seem as if it is the actual dissent, mm. you know, the fact that people are raising issues, that is the problem. You know, and so then we rush into uh, supporting any sort of intervention that will simply calm down the pressures. You know, not really looking at the issues. But a good example is these IABC talks that are now going to be conflated with all these hate speech discussions. You know, instead of us sitting down and saying, "Well, it's not really just about calming people down; it's about resolving issues." The, what led to 2008 uh, uh, post-election violence, you know, why issues with the electoral system, you know, and we need to be asking, well, we had the same electoral system and failures in 2013, people complained about it. We are going to another election where we, everybody seems agreed that there is a problem with the electoral system. Mm. But we are now getting into a situation where we are allowing, just because they can calm down the pressures, we are allowing the politicians to essentially close the doors, have their backroom discussions, you know, where we are simply allowed to uh, volunteer some uh, information that they will decide what's important at DTC. You know, but we're essentially locked out of it as if we are not stakeholders, mm. you know, the rest of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And this is my point, is we need to be going back and say, well, no, no, really, here are the issues. Let us put them down, you know, and what matters to Kenyans? You know, what matters to the, uh, uh, I mean, how 
do we ensure that every person's vote counts, mm -hmm. you know, and is counted? Okay. You know, ETC. All those issues cannot be left to simply politicians who have a stake in the elections, let us forget. Mm. You know, they'll come out telling us how they represent people in ETC. But these are but people the with a stake there, there and mm. I don't think we can trust them mm. to say, well, let me put aside my interest in the election for the sake of the, you know, for the, sake of, uh, of, of the people I represent. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Mm. So I'm, I'm saying our media needs to get away from this sort of fear of confrontation, mm -hmm. you know, and to tell the country that, look, you need to confront this because if you don't, you will confront it. You'll, you'll pay it. for it later. Yeah. Oh, Hito, regarding the issues of uh, the IEBC, which, of course, uh, we, ha we were having demonstrations going on, and that seems to be taking a back burner in some regard. But, of course, we do know that there is a softening of stance from both sides of the divide. Do you think, as members of the Fourth Estate, we've made it very clear to Kenyans what the issues are, what spending, and what we should expect? Uh, um, I think I may fault ourselves to that end that we've not done really an excellent job. We have proposals already. Uh, we've only uh, done, maybe because of space and concerns of airtime, we've not done explicitly what do these uh, stakeholders really want. Mm. Uh, there was the very strong uh, voice of the churches. What is it that the churches really wanted? changed in the next election and with just 12 uh, 12 13 months to the next election uh, we do not have a Supreme Court in place uh, we've seen uh, the process of filling the vacant positions already advertised uh, but what kind of Supreme Court do we want how long are we going to see through should there be uh, a presidential petition for example uh, the election rules going to change to factor in the proposal that was made by the current supreme court uh, asking for added time to determine uh, a presidential petition um, we have issues with the police um, uh, police force which will be a very critical player and stakeholder in the next general election in terms of security of Kenyans and security of the election itself. Mm -hmm. have but, we but haven't we defined all that and given that narrative? Uh, no, no, it's for me, it, 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 it should be a consistent pitch, what we call the countdown. Mm -hmm. What are the real issues? What needs to be fixed? What kind of voting system are we going to use? Mm -hmm. Have we procured the equipment? Has it been procured in a better way, not in a way that has question marks like we have seen before? Uh, what happens with the current commissioners? Are you going to pay them and get them off the boat? Or, you know, those are the issues we must constantly put before Kenyans so mm -hmm. that the, uh, you know, one of the things that I find um, uh, has, has really been discussed, um, mm -hmm. if you look at the, I mean, everybody's talking about extending um, the Supreme Court uh, uh, at the time for the presidential petition, which is important and I think uh, uh, practical, yeah. uh, uh, it's practical we do that. But if you look at why um, uh, the Odinga petition was late, you know, a lot of it had to do with the fact that the IBC refused to give yeah. The, the data it has. So actually the law we should be looking at in addition to extending um, uh, the, the, petition the, the petition time is the law as to whether the IBC can refuse to give you the information that you need to file a petition. Mm -hmm. you know and this is what i'm talking about when i say right. let us articulate the issues we need I, I it means if, if going you, back if you have read the Okoa yeah. kenya bill mm -hmm. uh, it spells out properly that if elections are the president is being mm -hmm. elected by voters in constituencies mm -hmm. why wait for somebody called hassan to announce the results in nairobi if they were counted in gatundu south in a primary yeah, but yes, but still you and would then, need if yes. you filed a petition even yes. at gatundu south you would need if it's a form 34 no, whatever yes, it, it is whatever form there. it is yeah. you, you know, know you would need that form you know. and the thing is if the ibc can say that no we will not give you this form and go to court it can tie you up in court which is what he did to odinga you know and took up his time and this is my thing is what i'm saying is let's go back and look at the election what let us the audit mm. the election mm. and ask what are the issues and then when the politicians see it, because right now they're saying oh we're not going to discuss the constitution we're not going to do this etc but actually we should be saying no these are the issues, you know, that I we cannot that. have what we are talking about, I mean, a, a backroom deal 
that works for Uhuru and Kenyatta but does not work for us. We can't have okay. another IPPG, which is what IPPG was. Don't forget, IPPG wasn't ours. It was Moi's thing. Sure, sure. It, it was done essentially to blunt the push for reform. You know, and this is what I'm saying is let's get away from okay. that model All and right. actually okay. have one where we yeah. insist on what our issues are. Yeah, I'm concerned that uh, that lacks sometimes in terms of uh, is consistency in terms of the people who do some of these things. Mm -hmm. for, for example, Standard has uh, specific people. He was a good, very good political reporter, but he's now an editor. Does he have time to follow up <laughs> some of those things? He's in so, Colombia. So, yes. So, so, so we have a serious turnover that mm -hmm. we don't have people who, are, who seem to have institutional memory in some of our mm -hmm. media houses to Next. pick up to pick up things and, left uh, uh, love and, and follow so, so mm -hmm. those are that's also an internal challenge that media must deal with mm -hmm. now we are 14 13 months to an election do we have election desks in our mid, in, mm -hmm. in our media houses for it example? should already be set up yes, right now. Uh, so to so start now looking at some of, because our history in in, in, in law making has always that we, we make uh, reactive law yeah. we, we always <laughs> react to situations mm -hmm. that has been our history uh, why why the form cannot be announced in the Tundu south because if we to at one stage say mm -hmm. he could not trust some of his returning officers mm -hmm. so you know we react uh, to things which is not yeah. very good in a law making process okay because all right I, I, I want us to wind up but i wanted us to also look at uh, this uh, story here on the standard uh four kenyans jailed for life in south sudan for uh, a cry for justice and this is because apparently they were in the process or swindled uh, the government of uh, 14 million us dollars and this is in regards to now corruption in kenya because because one of the reasons why corruption seems not to uh, ever be buried is because nobody ever does time. Should this be a leaf, maybe we should borrow from, uh, from, from our neighbors. Uh, given, assuming that the trial they went through was uh, just, was good. Uh, Ohito, maybe your comments on that. Um, <laughs> not that Actually, we would we'll be doing Sudan. life yeah. sentence. South Sudan has had its own fair share of uh, confronting corp corruption, you know. Um, in fact, in the global eyes, people say they perfectly copy-pasted Kenya into their system. Mm. But the mere fact that Kenyans uh, have been arrested there is a cause for concerns for us. Are we exporting bad seeds to our neighbors? <laughs> uh, those are questions which should concern us. But in the eye of justice, um, if there is enough evidence that they were really culpable, then I have no problem. Let them face the law. Okay. Victor, in terms of whether Kenya should borrow a leave from that, I think just being strict and having very strict... It's global expectation. Regarding. It's global standards that once the due process of law has been... people, The, the, the issue of impunity is what uh, negates almost all what we want to do. Mm. But many times we move on, move, want to take this action, then we are held back. Mm. But to us, there be, be strict observance of the rule of law and where people are found capable of having done this or that, yeah. law should take hand. One comment, Gadara. Uh, well, I think we we shouldn't forget that uh, this case has been running for quite a long while. Um, that these were Kenyans who were arrested initially, not even told why they were arrested. You know, uh, were kept locked up for a while, uh, for quite a long time. Um, uh, we didn't see much action from our government to go talk to the South Sudanese mm -hmm. about why they are treating Kenyans this way. So I have issues with whether this is actually a case of Kenyans who are corrupt, who have then been arrested well, it's a justice and system that Yes, and then... Let's not forget, there was a statement that our president told us, um, and I think Dwala repeated, that they will never allow again any Kenyan to be tried by a foreign and, and, court. Okay, we need you to... Know, nobody <laughs> discusses that, and this is part of what I say. It's follow up. Amnesia. All right, no Gadara, we'll have to wind it up right there because of time. Thank you very much. Patrick Gadara, who's a communications consultant. Victor Buire, the deputy CEO for Media Council of Kenya. And last but not least, David Ohito, digital editor with The Standard. Thank you, gentlemen. And that's the news room thank you also for your participation on twitter i will read some of your comments as we continue with the show but for now we'll take a short break when we come back we've got some news updates but later on today we'll be looking at yoga yeah and i know there are some who are concerned regarding yoga having a spiritual connotation and whether you want to get into all that so we'll be having yoga and one of our reporters is actually going to be in studio uh, to um, well show us her prowess in yoga do stay with us right here on morning express coming up.